Good afternoon. My name is Bill Jones with The Jones Firm, and I'm here to talk about Texas infrastructure. You cannot talk about Texas infrastructure without talking about the Texas Central Rail Line, a rail line that will take passengers from Dallas to Houston, Texas on a high-speed rail over 200 miles per hour in one and a half hours. We're here this afternoon with the president and CEO of the Texas Central Rail Line, Carlos Aguilar. And we are going to talk about where we are and where we're going with this particular infrastructure, which is of a significant impact to not only Texas's landscape, but to the Texas economic landscape as well. Carlos, let me start by asking you, Tell us a little bit about the travel experience that you expect to deliver to a passenger leaving Dallas going to Houston when you are finished with this project. Thank you so much, Bill, uh, and thanks, uh, White Texas, for the invitation. Um, so the idea is how to introduce the most efficient and safest uh, mode of transportation in the world to Texas. So what we've tried to do is to make it seamless, and there are we looked at all the pressure points for travel uh, that people have when taking a journey, everything from booking a ticket to ensuring that you get there on time uh, to the station, uh, your boarding uh, process to the platform and then the train and then the ride itself. And the idea is, I know it's an overused term, but make it seamless. Seamless meaning that all of that will be managed through your uh, mobile phone, It'll be mobility as a service. And the idea is that all of these aspects are coordinated from your point of departure to your point of destination. For example, if you have an Uber or, or a Lyft ride, that would be incorporated into your plan, into your fare. That's the idea. So that from beginning to end, everything is stress relieved. That is the idea we've spent thousands of hours working on this, interviewing folks, uh, doing surveys, and trying to address all of this in the best way we can. So you're trying to encompass soup to nuts from the time they leave their home or their office to the time they arrive at the air, I mean at the uh, train station, to the time they arrive at their destination, and ultimately to wherever they're going in Houston or if you're going from Houston to Dallas back. Actually beyond that, the idea is from booking of your, fly, of your uh, journey to after you have the experience itself. Uh, for example, if uh, you're late for a train, since it's gonna be connected with your app, uh, we will know you're late. Uh, then you'll be rebooked on the next train. And you have to wait maybe 15 minutes to get on the next one. If there's a fare difference, for example, if uh, you go from peak to off peak and there's a refund due, you'll get your refund. All of this as seamlessly as possible. So the idea is from really the beginning of your planning of your trip to after you take your, your trip uh, and also the experience on board. The experience on board is basically ensure that you feel, again, relief once you get to your seat. Use your Wi-Fi, uh, do your work, know that everything will work you know, on time. You'll be there arriving on time for a meeting, for example, and coming back uh, the same day to Dallas, again on time. All of this is the idea behind the system. And so far, uh, as I understand it, you anticipate only one stop in between Dallas and Houston, and that's outside of College Station, Texas. Th that is correct. That well, is correct. The Aggies among us will be happy about that. That is good. Uh, <laughs> but again, it's not the only college there. <laughs> we want to cater for the whole uh, community there and also integrate uh, as much as possible uh, both our system, our technology. One of the ideas we have is to set up uh, a center of excellence uh, in, in College Station, uh, hopefully with Texas A&M. And the idea is to be a center of growth of the industry for the U.S. Uh, from Texas. Tell us a little bit, a bit about where you are in the project in terms of shoveling dirt and getting started. Mm -hmm. In terms of getting ready for that phase, we're as, as ready as a project could be, I would say. Uh, we've defined the scope, for example, very clearly. There are many contractors involved. We've signed contracts with uh, the civil contractor and the equipment uh, installer. 
So all of that interface is already in place and uh, they would not have signed uh, lump sum contracts if it weren't because the scope is defined. So that means that once we get funding, the project could be executed very quickly. And what is the budget that you've so far established for the project? Yeah, well, you focus on the hard cost, which is really what, what we can define, right? Which is all the bricks and mortar and technology and everything that you have to install to ensure that the uh, system runs. And that is about $24 billion. Uh, at least a half of that, and we're hoping it's going to be more, is um, U.S. sourced. So a lot of uh, jobs, I mean, we're talking 17,000 uh, jobs that would be needed during construction and a supply chain that encompasses about 37 states. So a lot of activity now that we need it after, after COVID. So how long would the economic impact that you've just described, how long would that economic impact impact Texas? For, for what period of time are we talking about so this project? Just for the construction phase itself, it'll be eight and a half months. We, we've been very focused again on defining scope and dividend responsibilities, all these things, doing the different players. And that's what it yields. So eight and a half months of activity that will be everything from industrial production, uh, for example, all the concrete uh, structures that we need for the viaducts would have to be manufactured first. So there's manufacturing and then there's um, building that comes after that. So, yep, about seven years worth of work. And then beyond that, of course, it's the economic activity that comes from the train itself. At both ends, in the middle of the alignment, we want to introduce things like uh, broadband, because we'll have the right-of-way, obviously, and be able to use it for other benefits uh, for the community. So I think it goes way beyond the construction phase. So you're not only talking about having an impact in Texas in uh, the actual travel source, you're talking about changing how we travel in Texas uh, in terms of the method by which we travel and the, what we encounter when we travel. That is correct. I mean, it's very difficult to explain something that we've never seen, right, in the United States. But this is how uh, useful this mode of travel is. And that is why it's been successful for this distance, more or less, in um, you know, countries around the world, in Europe, in Japan, and other places. Once people understand how seamless it is, how on time it is, how safe it is, uh, it'll be adopted. So that's the goal. It's, we know there's a problem of congestion in Texas. We know, you know, both uh, the Dallas area and the Houston area grew by over a million uh, inhabitants in the last 10 years. Only two cities in the country or, or city metro areas that grew at that pace. So we need solutions. And this is what we want to provide for the growth of Texas. So as we end our discussion, um, what is it that you would like to leave with the folks who are watching this program about your rail line, where you are, and what you hope to ultimately establish? I think it's a couple things. One is corporate responsibility. We have progress this project in consultation and discussions, one-on-one, -on -one, for example, with landowners, and we'll continue to do that. We know these are neighbors that are going to be there forever. Uh, we want to benefit the communities. We want to have a very aggressive diversity program, for example, and inclusion. We want to have a very aggressive training program as well in developing a new industry for the state and for the U.S. Well, there you have it, folks. President and CEO Carlos Aguilar, as he brings to us the Texas rail line, the first of its kind in the United States of America, and it starts right here in Texas.